I'm Kenya. Yo, I'm Kendra. We're, We're twins. twins. We, we love, love to watch. watch. And this, this is our review of Marvel, Marvel Studios, Shang-Chi, and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Spoilers are ahead, people, so if you have not seen this movie yet, do yourself a favor, go see it or stream it, and come on back and geek out with us. Now on to the review. <laughs> Directed by Destin Daniel Critton, Marvel Studios' Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings takes place after the events of Avengers Endgame. We're introduced to Shan, who is really Shang-Chi, a skilled martial artist raised by the centuries-old crime lord of the menacing Ten Rings organization, Wen Wu, played by the mesmerizing Tony Leung. Shang-Chi is living a carefree life as a valet in San Francisco with his BFF Katie, a tolerable Aquafina. When he's forced to confront his past after being targeted by his father and the Ten Rings. Come on, guy! Does he look like he can fight? Come on, bro! You okay? When Wu wants his son to come home, and he sends some of his Ten Rings henchmen to collect, led by an impressive Florian Montaneu as Razor Fist. This violent postcard from his long-lost dad kicks off Shang-Chi's entrance into the MCU's ever-expanding universe, now featuring even more corners of the underworld, eastern mythology, and some of the most impressive action sequences the franchise has pulled off to date. Ten Rings emerged from Labor Day weekend with an almighty POW, receiving overwhelmingly positive reviews and breaking box office records for the highest grossing domestic release of that pivotal weekend. And the records are still being broken, and the hype is still going on, and people are still going to the theater in droves to see this movie. And let me tell you, we are here for it. On the surface, this movie has everything you'd expect from an MCU origin story, but it doesn't take long before the surprises start to come. Some very subtle but culturally momentous, others much more fantastical but equally impactful. Marvel smartly opens Ten Rings by telling us the real legend of the so-called Mandarin, or Wenwu, as we'll come to know him by the end. His story is told to us in Mandarin, and a moving voiceover by Shang-Chi's mother, Jiang Li. Wenwu discovered the otherworldly rings that bring him superhuman powers and immortality centuries ago, and has used them to annihilate any enemy standing in his way ever since. What stops him? Love. In a stunning Wuxia-inspired scene that could have been plucked right out of Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, or Hero, Wen Wu meets mysterious, equally powerful Zhang Li on the borders of the mystical hidden village of Talo. In just a few story-packed minutes, Marvel shows us it's not playing around. Unmatched when it comes to introducing compelling new characters with death or new worlds balancing action and fantasy, they're proving with Ten Rings that they can continue to tell stories in a post-blip multiverse that feel fresh and unexpected. Just the way that the the score and the voiceover um, by Fala Chen, um, who played uh, Jiang Li, it just all came together. And then you sort of like open on uh, Tony Young play, playing Wen Wu, and like the whole thing just felt not like a Marvel movie at first like it took me a minute to remember that I was that I'd come to see a Marvel movie because it it felt more like something that you would see in the opening credits of Hero or um, Crouching Tiger Hidden Dragon it was just very sort of thing something I appreciate but something that I just haven't seen in an MCU movie before yeah you know this film does follow the MCU formula and it is kind of it does have a lot of the story beats that Black Panther had, but but even with Black Panther's opening, um, Njobo was telling Ajaka about Wakanda in English, and this is Shang-Chi's mother telling him about Tao Lo and his father in Mandarin. So the fact that they made that very conscious choice to have these characters speak in the language that they speak with each other yeah. um, is a good, it's it, it's a good striking choice. And it shows I, you that they're it, learning. It, yeah, yeah, and they, are, they have given uh, creators who are versed in that culture, who know what they're talking about, which they did with Black Panther, but you could just tell this was a labor of love and you could tell that everyone took as much care with it as they could. So that was a really great choice for me. What they did in Iron Man 3, I think threw a lot of people off. Um, and it, 
It was something that they tried to do less clumsily with uh, the ancient one, but it was still very problematic. And, and Kevin Feige even said, you know, we could have cast Asian actors, uh, but written their characters in ways that subverted those harmful stereotypes. I think that them letting us know that Wen Wu or the Mandarin is a real um, badass, yes, like a real, like an actual badass, yes. and he is not built on, on racist stereotypes and, and tropes. I think by giving someone like Tony Leung uh, the ability to come in and give notes on what who he thinks his character is, who, how he would like to play his character, that really went a long way, as well as the writing and directing. So kudos. Yeah, give me that wish. Yeah, <laughs> I want. Yeah. So it was really great. I was just so happy. I was like, <gasps> something you think time. that might be out of place um, in a big budget action. Um, oh, excuse me, uh, a big budget American action Hollywood film. action movie. Yeah. Uh, but this was so right. It just was so right, and the balance was there. That's the most important thing. Mm -hmm. They balanced that story that authentic authenticity uh with the sort of large action sequences and the hollywood you know glitz right. and glamour it was so um authentic in my opinion like they even got it right down to like when they would slow do the slow motion camera I know, shots I know of Tony them staring Leon has at been each in other so many of those types of scenes in his career so like, like they he's got like it. yeah i got this <laughs> i know how to do this one <laughs>
We love seeing the inclusion of subtle, meaningful cultural details that help make the film feel grounded in a reality that reflects the one MCU fans inhabit. From the Kung Fu Hustle poster on Shang-Chi's bedroom wall, to removing his jump mans before entering Katie's home, her grandma's preparation for the Chinese Day of the Dead, Katie's immigrant family and their Asian friends nagging them to put their degrees to good use right down to singing the night away at karaoke. We also really appreciated the grander moments of immersion into a culture the MCU hasn't truly touched on before, making Ten Rings feel like its own special melting pot of action-adventure fantasy mixed with the Marvel superhero staples we've come to know and love. I want to see these characters come back. I want to see these characters make the kind of cameos that Wong gets to make. He's the new uh, Coulson. One of the opening scenes where they were talking to their friends, which was very exposition heavy. However, the fact that they had two different types of Asian friends and not a white person in sight, I really love that. You know, to see the East Asian and Indian Asian representation there and their friends were, you know, People who you could tell were set up to be on the opposite end, sort of people who represented the responsible, you know, model Asian Simu and Aquafina on the other side, who are the sort of <laughs> the Americanized parents nightmare, <laughs> like taking it easy breezy, Rebels, man. We're yeah. not gonna be doctors, we're not gonna be lawyers, we're gonna be car valets and we're gonna enjoy our lives. Um, that was even really great to see the the different aspects of Asian culture. And even someone mentioned when they were in the scene, they were mentioning um, I speak ABC, which is American born Chinese. And that was just a little thing that was a line that probably nobody really picked up on except for American born Chinese people who use the phrase ABC and say that to each other when they're letting each other know that they are, you know, whatever generation American born and that they have the same sort of social and cultural uh, issues that they are dealing with in their day-to-day -day lives. I really just loved that aspect of, yeah. of the storytelling that this movie just was real fresh <laughs> and it wasn't yeah. it wasn't yeah. like beating you over the head yeah. it was just really great and it, it, it was it was also reflected in you know some of the more fantastical things that you saw like in the third act like with the you know there was nine tail foxes and you know dragons yeah. and auntie nan took them through the history of um the village and their people and it was the way that right down to the costuming and the way things were styled <laughs> Shang-Chi, trained as a killer by a kind of blink and you'll miss him death dealer, combines his styles of graceful Tai Chi and brutal Wing Chun, passed down to him by his father, mother, and Auntie Nan, respectively. His moves are a refreshing addition to the Avengers skill set, along with his 10 supernaturally powered rings, of course, the fight scenes in 10 rings, choreographed by the late stunt coordinator Brad Allen and fight coordinator Andy Cheng our thrilling and entertaining callback to our favorite martial arts movies, filled to the bursting point with drunken master, rumble in the Bronx style stunts. The fighting is also used for some pretty pivotal visual storytelling. We adored the moment later on in the film when Jiang Nan, played with commanding presence by the legendary Michelle Yeoh, unfolds Shang-Chi's fist until it's mirroring her open palm. Then, together, they dance as they fight, until he's finally able to best his preternaturally skilled aunt, a nice parallel to the way his parents first fought and fell in love in the beginning of the movie. The message, balance, nature, love, makes the wielder far more powerful than the one driven by greed who uses only brute force. film are, in our humble opinions, the pillars on which the story's strongest themes rest. The heart of the story is obviously Shang-Chi's mother, Zhang Li, portrayed by Fa La Chin. We appreciated Cretton for showing us that Shang-Chi is who he is because of the lessons of balance she taught him before his father's need for vengeance corrupted his innocence. Michelle Yeoh adds grace and gravitas to the already amazing acting we get with Leong and Chen. Almost every moment of her screen time in the third act is used to push Shang-Chi and his sister towards their destiny. It's always a thrill to see her fight again, but then we already knew we could count on Michelle Yeoh to deliver the goods. 
played by Munger Zhang. Zhai Ling's entrance was fierce, silent, and deadly. When we first meet her, all grown up and not here to play games, in an underground cage fight with her brother Shang-Chi, she is nothing but intense, wordless anger. We couldn't keep our eyes off of her. She maintains that just under the surface intensity throughout as her story unfolds, providing us with many of the most emotional beats in the film, especially when it comes to being essentially abandoned by her brother. We left her having taken her father's place as the leader of the Ten Rings, training women where they weren't allowed to train before. We cannot wait to see her pop up again somewhere in the future as either a new threat or a badass ally. Aquafina as Katie also has some cool moments and is a pretty solid committed partner to Shang-Chi's hero in training. We like that she seems to feel right at home in such a huge franchise, even if, in the end, her journey took a slightly unbelievable turn. As much as we enjoyed how Katie's POV echoed the audiences in many situations and her performance around some of the movie's cultural themes, we wish Creden had resisted the urge to hand Katie the Hail Mary in an already pretty fantastical third act. <laughs> known for his critically louder roles in In the Mood for Love, Less Caution, The Grand Master, to name a few, Tony Leung is, without a doubt, the standout of this cast. To be honest, we don't know if this villain would have worked half as well if not for the brilliant decision to cast Mr. Leung. He's meant to be the driving antagonist for most of the film, but as with Killmonger and Thanos, his motivations are layered, albeit misguided. He makes acting choices you don't expect to see in the kind of franchise juggernauts Marvel turns out, and the viewing experience is all the better for it. When, when Wu first appears on screen, you don't take your eyes off of him for the rest of the movie. In fact, his acting is all about his eyes, drawing you in and making you watch carefully to see how he's going to externally express whatever is hidden inside his mind next. Falling in love with Zhang Li, enacting his revenge on a rival gang, sending his 14-year-old son off to murder his wife's killer. The moment he realizes, far too late of course, that he was wrong. Tony's acting through a very human story arc helps earn our empathy towards Win Wu. It's about time Mr. Long caught the attention of general American audiences. He's truly something new for the MCU. As longtime fans of his ourselves, we are so glad that more American genre movie fans now get to meet and fall in love with this powerhouse performer. It's not a secret that um, Tony is now sort of Marvel fans' new sort. Of, he's Zaddy. in contention to be the he's best, Zaddy. the new best villain. Oh, and yes, um, that, that is it what happened I with Killmonger. It happened with Loki before him. Even when I saw the first trailer, and there was that tracking shot of him sitting in the chair, and he just lifted his eyes to camera. <laughs> that was. Those old eyes. It was a moment. Those it was young like, eyes. Oh, well. Oh, Mr. Leung. Wow. Hey, uh, there's this YouTube video that I watched called The Eyes of Tony Leung. It's by a channel called Accented Cinema. It's a really good channel. It looks at uh, pop culture, Asian culture, film culture um, through the eyes of an Asian sort of film goer and fan. And one of the videos he posted was about Tony Leung and his career as a whole, his career tra trajectory as a whole. And the fact that this is Tony's first American Hollywood film when Hollywood's been courting him for quite a long time. This is the one he decided to do. And he, what he brought to the character was such a depth of emotion to what could have been a throwaway villain. Marvel is really getting better at writing their villains yeah, and they're getting they better at casting. I mean, they've always been really good. You know, they, they cast well. Yeah. They've made a few missteps, but this was a, a real triumph for them because not only did Tony bring his ideas to what the character should be and how he should be, mm -hmm. but then the writer and director and producer all worked together to build this narrative um, that was way more layered than just a vengeful father and right. a rebellious son. Tony Leung is such a good actor. I'm so happy he's in the MCU. Whatever happens uh, with this character, even though he met his end at the end of this film. I don't think he can be put to use. He's dead. Just like Killmonger. Killmonger's gonna be in Black Panther 2. <laughs> Marvel is formulaic, yes. However, that formula is successful. And it one of the successful. things about that formula that they are like you were saying, getting really good at, and one of the things that I hope that they don't abandon should they decide ever to change the formula, is the development of really compelling villains, villains yeah. that have more depth than 
the, your average one of the mill villain in a in, in a superhero comic book adaptation movie. Um, but yeah, Tony. Yeah, check out The Eyes of Tony Young by Accent Cinema. We're going to link it down below. Um, it's really great. While Ten Rings feels like a big leap in the right direction for Marvel Studios, especially in terms of representation for marginalized cultures, there is still room for improvement. The film's third act, as most reviewers have pointed out already, definitely felt like it was retreading old ground. The big CGI-laden battle at the end where all parties come together on the same soil to save the world. The comic relief that keeps audiences from feeling too much tension or despair, this time provided by the mostly pretty hilarious but still excessive use of Ben Kingsley's Trevor Slattery. The addition of an ancient dragon and a soul-sucking demon from another dimension gave us moments when we were staring at the screen, jaws wide open with awe. But like with other MCU third acts, this one dragged on just a bit too long. I think one of the biggest things I struggled with, because while I was watching him, he was hilarious. Um, ben Kingsley as Trevor Slattery. I, you know, I, I, I knew that they probably were going to try to do another gag from him. I didn't expect it to last as long as it did. It, he basically popped up in the third act and just like refused to go away. You know what I'm saying? Like you think that gag is gonna be over any any minute, any scene now, but no, he he stayed. He kept he kept going. I didn't get enough of maybe not closure, but I didn't get enough interaction in my opinion between Jia Ling and uh, Wen Wu or Jia Ling and and uh, Shang Chi. Even I know they touched briefly on you know the the separation that they that they had in their childhood and the estrangement um, from their father and their mother's death. But I don't think they gave her enough um, emotional yeah, I mean, closure. There were things there, and we did get that post credit scene. However, this was a very father and son sort of centered uh, yeah. story, which uh, these usually are. You rarely get to see the woman or girl in the family reckon with any of her stuff <laughs> so that she what, was left with. What we were given, I think, it was, it was, was great. It just left me Could've wanting more. more. In fact, I really think that uh, while I understood that they were trying to close a gaping hole that they left open with uh, Trevor you know, Slattery, it. I really feel it's like closed. they could have given his uh, responsibility in the film to a member of the family. Uh, or even preferably Shiley. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like there could have been a more believable use for her. I don't mind her picking up a bow and arrow and joining the fight, but her to hit the like winning shot at the like end. The winning shot, though. That was a like little. The winning shot. That's a bit much. It was a bit. That 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 definitely. You know, the dragon didn't. The dweller in the darkness didn't. But that shot that Katie pulled off at the end that definitely suspended my. That took me out of the the film <laughs> i was like wow and then i was like hmm for real <laughs> like i don't understand why they wouldn't have been a member of the family why that wouldn't have been the reason one of the reasons that when Wu needed to get his kids back because they were the key to him getting to this place to to yeah. save his his wife or so he thought um so while that was really good uh comedic relief thank you for the laughs i i just kind of would have some of them preferred to exchange that for a little bit yeah. more character uh, development. Yeah. And this is part of the MCU formula that definitely I would love to see improved or even removed altogether is this dependency on laughs. On laughs and jokes and shit, but also, cameos. to be honest with you, um, cameos too, but also if there's this, there seems to be this rule in Hollywood that if you have a predominantly diverse cast, there's gotta be a white guy in there somewhere. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I think that that can go away. They are getting better uh, with origin stories, writing, fleshing out characters, uh, casting really good, uh, diverse uh, group of actors, talented actors, introducing us to, to new talent and people. So I just want them to keep that up. Shang 
Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings is a crazy good MCU movie, a great martial arts film, and a marked improvement on the formula we're used to from the studio. Marvel, Disney, and Feige have their hands pretty damn full juggling multiple movie releases, coming at us pretty much back to back over the next couple of years. Plus, with the streaming shows, we still haven't gotten more spinoffs and an ever-expanding multiverse full of characters. There's so much coming at us, it's hard for us fans to keep up. So having them pull off a movie as important for the times as Ten Rings feels good and right. We hope they can keep it up with Wakanda Forever, Captain America 4, Ms. Marvel, and others. They can't afford to slip back into the negligence we witnessed in the past when it came to women and heroes of color. From now on, diversity needs to be so intrinsic to the MCU that it simply is part of the formula that creates a success, not an exception to it. As for us, we officially love Shang-Chi and The Legend of the Ten Rings. Go see it, stream it, give it a positive rating, and talk about it on social media. It's that good. So final thoughts, uh, yeah, we really, I, I, I don't know about you, I'm just gonna speak for myself, I really, really, really love this movie. I had a really good time in this movie. I had such a good time that, um, like with Bam Black Panther, I ignored the things about the MCU that I find a little bit tiresome um, because I was having such a good time. And the, I just want to point out that the reason that we are making so many comparisons to Black Panther is because, duh, representation, diversity, and firsts. There are a lot of things there that are Black Panther sort of was the blueprint for. And, uh, and also the cast and creatives have mentioned this quite a few times when they were talking about um, this film and what Especially it means Cibu to and Kevin. Yeah, and those guys. Um, so yeah, there is definitely room for comparison there, and it's appropriate. I feel like, and also I think that hopefully we will see with the next Black Panther that that will be a vast improvement on the first, and that Marvel will continue to get better at telling these stories and tell more of these stories. Yeah, it, the, these are first. It's the same thing with Captain Marvel, same thing with Black Widow, you know, the first female-led films in, in this uh, huge fucking franchise. The Black Panther was the first predominantly African and African-American um, cast, crew, story, movie, film. And likewise, Shang-Chi is the first um, Asian-led uh, superhero movie in this franchise, but in the genre period. So, um, aside from Invincible. So, like, this is uh, momentous, but I would like to see a time when it's not like, oh, we got, you know, the first this, the first that. I want to just see yeah, diversity. I just want to see diversity. Like... Right. Like, with Eternals, for example, I have no notes. I, I think that it is a really a awesome cast and it reflects the audience that is makes up Marvel's um, fan base. And so moving forward, like with everything, Miss Marvel, She-Hulk, um, the Marvels, Ironheart. Ironheart, Captain America 4, Wakanda Forever, and beyond, and not just those, but whatever version of the Avengers movies that we are gonna get in phase three and four, I just want to see across the board diversity be baked into the Marvel formula as part of the rule for success and not the yeah. exception. It seems like they're headed that way. If you're paying attention to the Kevin Feige's announcements on the phases that are coming, uh, it seems like that's what they're doing. It seems like it's not so much of a, a pointed thing, but something that is just a part of the formula. Uh, we're Marvel fans. We're here for it all. We're going to be rolling on the journey. We're going to criticize what needs to be criticized and we're going to praise what should be praised. And that's just sort of the gist of it. And we really appreciate this movie and we really appreciate you guys for sticking with us and being patient um, and waiting for our review. We wanted to make it really good so we hope you guys enjoy it. If you like what you see, please like our video. It really helps the channel out. Make sure you're subscribed and that you have your notifications turned on so you don't miss any more reactions or reviews from us. Uh, and uh, make sure you go see Shang-Chi. Yeah, we're going to go see it again. Um, and as soon as it hits streaming channels, we're probably going to sit around and watch it. All right, well, we'll see you guys next time.